Double in. Munch. Can you call Moira, please? Yeah. Oh, they're so cute. They're just they, they like the them You like the crumbs. Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, Laura. <laughs> okay, well, I'm free. You are out of control. My name is Griffin McConnell. I, I was born in uh, September 2004. My life story has been a very up and down kind of thing. It's like you, you think it's going to be good and then everything collapses. <laughs> I know I have seizures. I, it stinks that I have seizures. <laughs> That's very lovely. I was diagnosed with epilepsy when I was, I think, five. This. When he was four, before all the medical stuff started happening, we had one of those goofy 10 and one games that was like Chinese checkers and, you know, uh, and checkers, and it also was chess. And uh, Griffin asked me to teach him how to play chess. It was very fun. It, the, the chess was kind of a major part of my surgeries because it, it was memorizing and I wanted to figure out what this game was. And so when time passed, my chess was getting better, but also my seizures were getting worse. And he was sitting in the car and he wouldn't respond to me. And I started yelling at him, Griffin, what's wrong? Come on, we gotta go. And it was just weird. We tried to do medicine and we tried to do, use a lot of drugs to make my seizures come down, but it didn't work. When you fail enough of the medicines, then you finally become a candidate for brain surgery. Called it. Let's see it. Bring it. He had his first two brain surgeries in 2012. One was a grid surgery where they take the grid and stick it straight onto the brain and then try to figure out where the seizures are coming from. A year later, he had a left functional hemispherectomy, which is where they disconnect the two sides of the brain and take out some of the tissue in the left hemisphere. Chess has played a huge role in this family. We're not doing this. No, we're, we're playing bullet chess. That's what that's, we do. This is one second chess. Well, I know, just change. Play one second chess. That's great. That's that just means that if you're white, you lose. Chess is always a passion of mine. I've, I've done it a long time, and so after the left hemispherectomy, I started to regain my thinking and my abilities. Why am I moving so fast? Yes. I did try to um, play chess, like we mentioned, but like it, I, I just, I thought, well, I did it for a couple reasons, just to see, try something new, to see if I liked it. Also, to try to get a little closer with my brothers, because I mean we're close, but like Sully and Griffin are much closer than me. I just sent you a challenge, Sullivan. I have your face in the other part of the screen. He was really happy to play again because he lost playing chess for about a year. Yeah. Um, and he'll tell you about this. He feels like that's where Sullivan, his younger brother, cheated him and got ahead of him in rating <laughs> uh, because Sullivan kept playing and Griffin couldn't. We played a lot before Griffin uh, was disabled and we still play a lot after he was disabled. Really the hard, ish the hard part of my brother's disability is that really he can do everything I can except it just takes him more time. Okay, hold on. Uh, all right, Qu quickly, I I'm going to check that out. That, that actually, I think that was a fortress. It's time oh. to check. Hold on. All I right, need... let's see. Was I correct? Was it a fortress? Oh my god, it is. It is? Okay, look, Wait. I played that like so terribly. So how did I play? After oh. knight C2, I have, I'm, I'm- Okay, so I have to play I'm, bishop I'm D5. Griffin made expert when he was 
12. And then he's just been stuck mm -hmm. uh, on expert, which is, uh, he's really pushing to make master. And part um, of that, I think, is because he was also trying to learn how to read and write uh, yeah. and do school. So trying to take all that brain power when you only have half of a brain to do all of that, I think, is partly why he hasn't gotten as fast. A big part of chess is everyone has an ego. And everyone, if they want to learn how to play chess, they have to know they, they're going to lose. Honestly, you've got to give Nakamura a great deal of credit on chess.com uh, because, uh, and I'm not saying that to suck up to chess.com <laughs> either, but God love them because they're doing these these new tournaments, these Pog Championships. Have you watched any of those? Oh, you should. They're, they're I awesome. I even kind of think they're so, fun to so watch. So <laughs> they have non-chess players, but they're really great uh, at Fortnite, or they're really great, and they have a bunch of followers on another platform. <laughs> and they, they pair them with a Nakamura or a, you know, a high-rated player, and that player works with them for like 20, 30 days, you know, gets them to a 1200 level or, or something there, thereof. And then they have a championship where they play and Nakamura just does commentary. I don't commentary. understand why he made those moves so But it's, isn't it what you said before, Ludwig, yeah. about like this, this cycle where it's like when you're, when the other guy's moving fast, you move fast. When they're moving slow, yeah. you move slower. It's the just rhythm. like you're feeling the, the rhythm. Flow. And so, you know, you're just watching rank amateurs play chess and it's hilarious because they miss easy checkmates, they blunder pieces right and left, but they're really serious about it. So like the guy who played the mountain on a Game of Thrones, uh, he's a chess player now. He was in the last Pog Championships. I mean, there's, I mean, there's something really enthralling about watching someone of his stature and size hunkered down, you know, making, you know, cussing because he missed a fork, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Uh, okay, 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 it didn't start well, uh, but it's going well now. He's taking the center. Uh, I'm just gonna castle. I'm just gonna castle here. Uh, I like that. I like that. I like castling. Yep. He doesn't Bringing do my pieces to the center. Uh, staying calm. He does this staying in our lessons. <laughs> <laughs> he does this in our least... lessons too. He's oh, super good. He's super good at getting <laughs> insight into exactly what he's thinking. Oh my god! What? <laughs> what? Okay. At six o'clock on this Saturday, uh, you are going to have a interview with Hikaru Nakamura. An interview? Yes, he's going to Zoom. You're going to have a Zoom call just with Hikaru Nakamura. What? <laughs> yes. That's a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> I love Hikaru. I'm, I'm his biggest fan. Team Asahara has entered the waiting room for this meeting. So, should I... So I say, Amit? Is that what it is? Okay. I'm ready. Can you hear me now? Yes. What's up? Good, good, good. Um, I, uh, I'm i feeling pretty nervous, but that's kind of cool when your favorite person is Hikaru Nakamura. So I'm very excited but nervous, you know what I mean? So, okay, all right, cool. So um, do you have any like least favorite part about chess? For a long time, I feel like it's sort of been like we, we, we idolize these top players. We try to say how smart the top players are at the game of chess instead of just uh, instead of trying to be inclusive and saying, well, it's, you know, there might be people who are really good at it, but anybody can play the game. You don't have to be smart to be good at it. But a lot of people sort of they, they figure, well, if you're if you're not a great chess player, then who cares? Like, you know, it doesn't matter. So you start judging the self-worth or what someone what someone does based on their rating instead of just being a person. Thank you very much, Hakaro. Um, no problem. I'm just, uh, it's exciting, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, well, which, which Olympiad did you play in though? I'm kind of curious now. He played in the Olympiad, the online Olympiad, um, which was the very first ever online Olympiad for people with uh, dis disabilities. Colorado is not, it's not, it's not big for people with disabilities who play chess. Griffin had a tremendous tournament in spite of having seizures. Um, he yeah. was bored too, and he scored a, a four out of seven points, which is every single person he played was at least 100, 150 to uh, 400 points higher rated than him. That was the point um, where I wanted to be something to inspire.
a great icon for me is Thomas Luther. He's a grandmaster, but he has a disability. And he is trying to create all of these tournaments that I've been into. And so for me, I want to be like Thomas Luther. He went six years seizure free, we think, and now he's having seizures again. It was kind of heartbreaking because I was doing so many things, like wonderful things, and now it came back. One of the games he lost quite badly, uh, he had a seizure uh, the last eight minutes of the game. The problem is that there's a clock ticking, and so all of a sudden my time went to 15 minutes to five minutes out of nowhere. And so these seizures are really messing up my play. There's a surgery coming up and we're trying, well, Griffin, Dad and Mom are trying to decide whether they should do it or they shouldn't. He's going to go in for an anatomical hemispherectomy, which is they take everything out of that left hemisphere. My biggest fear, and I, th I think Griffin's biggest fear, is that either he'll die in one, because that is always a possibility, or he has to have this brain surgery and it doesn't work. I think that's the more scary than even him passing away in the surgery, is that it doesn't work again. In my opinion, surgery is the only way that I can feel like, like the seizures have been gone. I just hope that he and Sully stay happy with chess because they commit a lot of time and energy to chess. So, yeah, I guess I, ju I just want them to be happy. Griffin is a miracle to me and I just think he's, he's my hero and I try to be as good of a person because he's so strong and he's taught me a lot. <laughs> It's really hard to take anything else yeah. super seriously, I mean, in yeah. terms of the, the small stuff, which is a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ruined That's all. We're not gonna cry. <laughs> we made it without crying, right here. <laughs>